evolution is evolution at or above the level of a species. The starting point of macroevolution is speciation, the process through which a species evolves into two or more new species. In order for a new species to form, a group of organisms must become reproductively isolated from other groups, and this reproductive isolation results from biological barriers to the formation of healthy, fertile offspring between individuals of two different species. By limiting the mixing of genes by individuals moving between two populations, their evolutionary paths diverge. Each population will acquire mutations at random and in potentially different parts of the genome. Furthermore, genetic drift and natural selection may be different in each population, and the gene pool, which is the total set of genes of all individuals in a population, will become increasingly different. After some generations have passed, the populations may reunite in a hybrid zone. If this happens, individuals may attempt to interbreed, forming a hybrid, an offspring produced when members of two species interbreed. If viable hybrid offspring between the two groups are produced, it may lead to the populations reuniting as a single species. However, if too much divergence has occurred between the gene pools, hybrids may be infertile, unhealthy, or completely absent. In these cases, speciation is complete and the two populations are considered separate species. So what would happen if two closely related species, which originated from one species, say due to a geographical barrier, ended up living in the same region? Would they be able to mate? They wouldn't, and this is due to the reproductive barriers that keep species distinct from each other. There are two types of reproductive barriers, known as prezygotic and postzygotic barriers. A prezygotic barrier is a reproductive barrier at the time of mating or fertilization that impedes the formation of a hybrid zygote. Let's take a look at the several types of prezygotic barriers. 1. Habitat isolation. This occurs when two organisms do not encounter each other in nature, for example, due to a geographic barrier such as a canyon or mountain. 2. Temporal isolation. This occurs when two organisms do not breed at the same time. For example, individuals of two species may be active at different times of the day. 3. Behavioral isolation. This occurs when two organisms are not sexually attracted to one another. This isolation may be as simple as not recognizing that the other individual is a potential mate. Four, mechanical isolation. This occurs when two organisms are not physically able to mate with one another. For example, if a bee doesn't fit into a flower in a way that allows it to capture pollen, the bee cannot deliver the pollen to another flower for proper pollination. Five, gametic isolation. This occurs when the sperm and egg of two organisms will not fuse to form a zygote. For example, sea urchin eggs are coated with a jelly that contains chemicals that preferentially activate sperm of the same species. The second type of reproductive barrier is the post-zygotic barrier, and this is a barrier to the development of a hybrid zygote into a healthy, fertile adult. Let's take a look at the several types of post-zygotic barriers. 1. Reduced hybrid viability. This occurs when the hybrid fails to develop normally and results in a weak, unhealthy adult. 2. Reduced hybrid fertility. This occurs when the hybrid develops normally into a healthy adult and may be a very strong and robust individual. However, the adult is infertile or the hybrid makes gametes, but those gametes will not fuse with the gametes of the previous generation. The commonly known example is the sterile mule hybrid formed by mating a horse and a donkey. 3. Hybrid breakdown. This occurs when over multiple generations the hybrids fail to thrive or reproduce. In this case, the first generation hybrid may seem normal. However, with each new generation, hybrid health or fertility begins to diminish and the hybrids eventually fail to thrive. 
To summarize what we have learned so far, reproductive barriers form the boundaries around closely related species, preventing them from interbreeding. Next, we're gonna look at the two situations that can result in reproductive isolation, allopatric and sympatric speciation. Allopatric speciation is the formation of a new species due to reduced gene flow in the presence of a geographic barrier. A physical barrier is the simplest way to minimize gene flow because if individuals of two groups do not physically encounter one another, interbreeding is impossible. Sometimes an obvious geographic barrier separates two groups of organisms. For example, the Grand Canyon, which was carved out over millions of years, is a physical barrier that prevented squirrels living on either side of the canyon from mating. This eventually resulted in the formation of two new species. However, a physical barrier is not necessary for reproductive isolation. With sympatric speciation, we see the formation of a new species in the absence of a geographic barrier. The most common mechanism of sympatric speciation is polyploidy, a condition in which an organism has more than the normal number of copies of a set of chromosomes due to a chromosome separation error that happens during cell division. For example, after thousands of years of hybridization, wheat has strains that are diploid, meaning that they have two sets of chromosomes, tetraploid with four sets of chromosomes, and hexaploid with six sets of chromosomes. The different number of chromosomes in these strains means that they cannot interbreed, leading to the formation of new species.